Alright, good evening YouTube, and today I'm going to show you how to make riveted chainmail for those brave enough to do it. I found that there's a serious lack of videos on the subject on YouTube, and so I'll get right into it. So here's my setup, and most of you will already know how to make your basic chain mill. Right here, the mandrel, wrap the wire here to get the rings. If you don't understand, get over to some other videos. Just gonna cruise through the easy parts. Right here, you got cut rings. And the thing about these rings is to make them workable, you need to anneal it first. What that is, is you just take a torch. Usually, we've got a propane torch here. You just take that, string them up on another piece of wire, heat them up till they're red hot, glowing orange, and then the, just let them cool slowly by air. Or you can throw them under ashes. That'll make them even softer. So once you get here, what you're going to need to do is flatten the rings to punch them. Some people like to use big uh, metal cylinders inside of piping but good hammer will do just fine. What I'm using for this is a simple two pound hammer and anvil. Now you're gonna want something hard to hammer them on. Anvil works fine, vices work, anything hard and metal. This you can see here really got beat up but it does the trick. may need to do some adjusting with it, but the product should look something like this. So now that you've got a bunch of your flattened rings, you're going to need some sort of hole to punch them over. Now this is probably the biggest problem for me, and I had to do a, get a little creative here. First, you can see here I tried drilling in some holes in the anvil. But the problem with this is that it's a cast iron anvil and so the edges really dent in around there and make the hole messy after about 50 rings. So what I managed to do is I found this little bolt fit perfectly into the hardy hole, drilled the hole straight through it, and that's what I use. So once you've got your hole, you're just going to take and you may out have to go out and buy this and work with it. We bought some steel punches and then you just take the end and file it down to a nice point. You'll have to work with the point and see what works best for you. And then you're gonna take this uh, punch and you're gonna punch out a hole right through that tab right here. Just punch through. So I'll show you some of that. So when you're punching these out, it's all going to be based on experience. There's no definite way. You want the back to open up just a little bit, not too much, or else your root ain't going to fit in there. But you want to be able to just start seeing through the hole there. So once you get to this, you've got to get your rivets. How we do that, just take some of your wire, flatten it out get it looking like this you're gonna want a whole lot of that what you do with this is you cut little triangles out of it just 45 degrees either way so you'll cut cut again just keep cutting back and forth and you're gonna get a bunch of these little buggers now once again this is all going to be based on what works best for you there's no set size or angle that you need I think these are probably 30 degree angles that I'm using. Doesn't matter. All you need is something that's going to fit your hole. So to get these in, you got to have pretty deft hands. So you take a rivet, just put it in your hole.
So once you've got it in there, you need to set the rivet. <clears throat> you can do this with any hole behind it. Uh, you are going to have to make some pliers for making riveted nail. But these are, I've just ground off the teeth of some pliers, made a deep pocket right here, and a shallower one over here. So you can use this deep pocket to set the rivet. But what I like to do is use these old holes that I messed up on. You just put the ring over the hole and use a lighter hammer. Nicely tap it till it starts to really get in there, flush with the top. Here we are, that's what it looks like, backside, rivets poking through. Here's where these pliers come in. So, the best way that I do it is put it over that deep pocket, squeeze as hard as you can, move it over the shallow pocket, squeeze again, and then from here it's pretty much riveted, but Again, I just move it back to a flat part with no pocket. Lightly squeeze it back to the shallow pocket, squeeze it, gives it a... And the last one. There we go. See, now we've got a very nice looking rounded rivet here backside just flat so that's just one ring here one ring if you're still if you're still feeling like you want to go keep doing that about a thousand times and you do by now you should know how to make chain mail if you're getting into this if you don't know yet go look at some other videos there's plenty of that so here's a couple starts I've got here and here's the project so far Making myself a new hauberk. This is all riveted, as you can see. Looking very, very nice. Can't wait to finish it. And that's really all there is to, do, to it. You just need to be creative with your stuff to get your tools. Don't be stupid. Use your propane outside a ventilated area. Wear goggles and ear protection when you need them. And have fun. You should get some really good stuff out of this.